Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and welcome to Wheel Swap Wednesday. This week I'm tackling the Hot Wheels Pass and Gasser. Um, I like this version. I like the color. I like um, the detail that's in it. I wish it was called out more uh, on the casting, which we're going to take care of, as well as a wheel swap because these are probably some of the most god-awful wheels I've seen. Um, just horrible, and I think this is a perfect candidate for a wheel swap. Um, as always... I think if you you know if you get any kind of inspiration out of this, um, that's the whole point. Subscribe, ring the bell to get notified of all future videos. So I was going through my shelf and, and looking at all the. I mean, I probably have eight thousand freaking cars to go through. Um, try to decide which one to do a wheel swap for this week. Um, and this one just kind of jumped out at me. I picked it up fairly recently, um, and I just thought it was perfect. It just needed wheels, really, essentially. the Everything about this thing is, is pretty pretty damn cool. Um, always start by drilling out the posts. Um, I go with a 1 16th drill bit, and then I'll step it up to most often a 3 16th um, to take the head of the post off. Um uh, that varies. Sometimes it all depends on what kind of post and the size of the post, but 3 is common. Detail on this is pretty good. Um, the the base, I mean, it's everything's plastic uh, except for the body. Um, there's some, some really good details on it. It's just bland. You know, it's kind of a, a dull gray. Um, the interior is all, what's, what there is of an interior is all chrome, which is the roll bar and the engine. The seat is very well detailed, and there's a nitrous bottle or a fire extinguisher, depends on how you look at it, right next to the seat. Um, so once it's apart, I'll take my 1 16th, I'll go all the way through, um, deep enough to put my 3 8 256 button head screws in. I've got my tap that I actually broke for the first time um, a few weeks ago. I'm still using it, though. Um, there's just enough left on the tap that it's actually the perfect size if I go all the way to where there's no threads it's exactly 3 8 so it works out well um, what's funny is when I broke it I was actually mimicking uh, Rob from Matchbox Garage you know I was saying tap the hole make sure you lube up your piece and that I was kind of laughing like I've never broken one in 10 months and it snapped right when I was doing it so uh, it can happen to anybody so there's my uh, 256 uh, button heads I always just make sure I'll put it on just just to double check the depth, make sure it all fits. That's the last thing you want to be doing is, is re-drilling or drilling a little deeper um, once it's all together. So I'm going to take these wheels out. The fronts are the way it's molded really sit in there deep. So they're a little bit of a challenge um, to get out, but I'll pry the tabs off and then I can just go underneath with my pick or if you have a pair of um, pliers or anything like that, they can just pop right out. Uh, without bending anything if you don't you know if you have any intention to using it so i've got a mix match set of wheels here i've got um some slicks for the back and then i've got some um i have one set of white wall tires that the white wall was thicker than the rest um and i think this is a perfect candidate because that was something that was common back in the in the 60s you just put on what you had so um <clears throat> the 1 16th k and s tubing and the reason I'm going to use this is because both the front and the rear wheels are not the right width. Uh, one's too short and the other one's too long. So um, I have to use axle tubes. So I'm going to use my Dremel after I've marked it. I always cut just a little bit on the other side of the line. And then I'll just kind of grind it down smooth till I get to the line. That way it makes sure I don't cut it too short. And then once I've done that, there's always like a little nib on it, so I'll just kind of use the uh, the disc to grind it smooth. You can use a file as well if you don't want to put your hands that close to, which I highly recommend not doing. Um, one of these days, you guys are going to get a get a show. It's going to turn into a horror movie as I slice my fingers open. So now here's a little trick I've been doing. I take the piano wire that I use for if I had to make an axle, and I slide it into my tube. And what I'll do is I'll actually grind, because I'm going to have to glue my, my wheels in, um, I'll actually grind my holes that I'm going to dip my glue into. And 
with the two with the axle piece in there you can actually just grind until you see sparks and then you can pull your tube out uh, it's hard to I don't know if i caught it on video or not yeah right there you can see some sparks and then you just pull the tube out it cleans the hole at the same time and you make sure you don't go too deep um, so it's a just a spare piece i keep kicking around then I, obviously you have to cut the axles that you have in half. Uh, make sure you grip it tight because those things will go flying and you'll never find them again. Um, the, you know, obviously on one side it wasn't too bad because all I had to do was push it in. The rear um, was too short to begin with, so I didn't have to worry about the axles touching each other when I put them into the tube. The fronts, however, because they were much wider than what I needed, I had to trim them down. So that when I push, you know, both sides in, it's not pushing the other side out. Um, so you have to trim, you know, cut it in half and then trim, you know, appropriately. Uh, I think I had to go a quarter inch on this one, um, which was quite a bit. So I was an eighth on each side just to just to make sure they don't touch. Because once you glue them in, you kind of it's kind of a pain in the neck to to get them out and to redo. So um, always check things and. Take your time, and, and what's what's great about these just wheel swaps, I know this is just a basic video, it's nothing fancy, I'm not mashing five cards together to make one, um, it's just a, a, I'm not painting anything except for some detail painting, um, and I just happen to have these wheels, so I'm not going crazy, it's just kind of a fun thing to do. Um, the interior, the one section of it there in the front, um, or I'm sorry, the rear actually holds well, it, it's the tabs hold it in, but it actually rests over the axle. So now with the axle tube, I need to make it just a, you know, a 16th all the way around. So an eighth inch bigger and uh, <clears throat> so that it fits flush. That's another thing that, you know, I've made the mistake of is not doing that and then trying to put it together and wondering why it's not fitting. <clears throat> Excuse me. That time of year where my allergies are kicking in again. Um, because of the axle tubes, and I'm, I'm kind of finagling the, the ride height, both front and rear, um, I need to grind away the things that are on the bottom of the chassis that might rub on the ground. In the front, there are some leaf springs molded in. You can see right there. Um, I'm just grinding down to the second leaf spring, and that is enough clearance for the, the front wheels. On the back, I just had to get rid of that just a tad bit of that radius that's the faux brake rotor so with the axle tube obviously it's going to be wider than the axle it's double the size so i have a grinding wheel that i use it's not a cutoff disc it's twice the size of a cutoff disc as far as thickness goes and it's actually the perfect width of the axle tube so i'm just going to use that to kind of clean out the holes and make a nice clean path for the actual axle to sit in. If you don't do this, it'll actually sit up higher as it goes into the grooves on each side. Sometimes that's okay. Sometimes you, you may want that. So I mask everything off as far as the interior pieces, um, which are two pieces than the actual chassis itself. The body, because I liked it, even though, I mean, this has got a ton of paint on it. You could just see it's caked on. Um, as I spooge on my finger there, and wipe it off. You have to use your middle finger if you're going to rub this polish on. Because what I want to do is I'm going to polish the um, the body itself with my. I've got some chemical guys um, polish and you know scratch and swirl remover. I think it's what it's called. Um, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here. You don't have to. This is a brand new buffing um, buffing wheel. I'm just barely going on. This stuff works amazing. You can see it's taking a little bit of blue off because uh, that is a brand new wheel, but it's not much. And it's going to give it a nice deep shine, um, which is a lot better than having to paint it. But you can see there's some horrible casting lines on this thing. If I do another one and I'm going to be painting it, I'm going to be spending some time filing. And after you do this, all I got to do is I just wipe it down with that terry cloth towel and it makes the shine just pop and it gives it a nice deep Nice deep finish that was there from the factory, just kind of hidden, I guess. 
Um, I'm taking some um, aluminum colored paint, which is lead belcher, which I say on every video. <laughs> and I'm doing the details like the front um, fuel tank, which is like a moon tank. I'm doing a little bit of the grill with a dry brush. And then I'll do the rear, um, the rear bar, which is, a, you know, supposed to be what the bumper is um, as well. So it gives it a, a, a different color, but it's still aluminum. I'm also hitting the rear differential and the front u-joint as well as the front sway bar what's kind of cool about this after i hit the engine here and i don't show it i don't know why i actually make a um, uh, a drive shaft for this out of 1 16th aluminum tubing uh, it actually looks pretty cool just the way it the, the way the casting is it just it it looks awesome painting the headers white which if anybody's ever installed white headers back in the day um, they were white for maybe three minutes, four tops, before they, the paint got all crappy and burnt off and started flaking. So I just thought it was kind of cool to put them as white and made it pop a little bit with the blue. Um, I'm going to detail the seat. I'm going to detail the taillights. Um, not filmed, but I'm going to be detailing the parachute on the back. The seat's got a lot of detail. There's a five-point harness in there, so... Um, you know, a lot of times all that stuff gets hidden from the factory because they don't, you don't see it because they don't really do anything with it. Just monocolor. Um, and it's a shame because there's a lot of great detail on these hot wheels. Uh, you know, some of them are horrible. If you, I know a lot of people are doing a flash, a flash cider challenge. And when you open it up, there's like nothing inside. So, um, sometimes it's good to see some, some detail. Um, you can kind of see my drive shaft there. I have a picture at the very, very end of the video so i'm just putting it together now um you know again this was just a fun project um and i've got a lot of things on the bench right now that are giving me fits and it was kind of cool just to work on something that you know i wasn't all stressed out um having to repaint and you know uh, we screw up all the time we just don't always admit it <laughs> um shout out to my patreon members um uh, their their help and their assistance every month is just greatly appreciated the ones with the icons next to them with for youtube they're linked down below please go check out their channels um, they're all doing some awesome work and i'm sure they'd appreciate the watches so again nothing fancy this is what i started with um hot, basic hot wheels um gas or casting um, definitely needed some some loving and um, some detail to make it pop i think i did that again this is a quickie um, something anybody pretty much can do at home um, especially if you're just starting out these are stuff like this is actually perfect to get started with because it's no pressure if you screw it up you screw it up who cares you know it's not a big deal you haven't wasted or invested hours you know this is three hours total hope you guys enjoyed this um, hope you got something out of it or maybe get some inspiration um, I appreciate it, and I will catch you on the next one.